This is your tool. And then to the left of that thing, or right of that thing. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. There you go. Awesome. Hi, ev hey, everyone. It's great to be here. Great to see a lot of familiar faces in the room with the awesome Dallas startup community. So thank you all for the part that you've played in bringing Guider to market. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you, especially. I'm going to thank you. So I'm going to start with telling you a story. And it's a story, my story as an entrepreneur, of leaving an amazing job. I was a CMO of a growth company, had stock, had shares, and I decided it was time for me to leave and go do something about a problem that I had observed in the world and a passion that I had, a passion for travel and a recognition that most of us would be micro-entrepreneurs living in a world that is location independent, where we're essentially all going to be a little bit of a nomad. And I ended up on this street um, in Florence called Via Santo Spirito, which is on the opposite side of the river where many tourists don't go. And I decided I had a really big problem. I couldn't figure out how to access the information I needed to have a really great experience in that city. I couldn't get to it on my phone. I didn't have data. And so the city that I wanted to find was lost. I, call, I reached out to somebody who was a blogger that I was following. Her name is Nardia. And I asked her to meet me. In this street, we met at an aperitivo spot that she told me about. She told me exactly when to get there, exactly what to order. And we met and we talked about the solution that I had proposed for the problem that I was facing. And I asked her about it. I said, is this a problem worth solving? And her answer was yes. And the problem was this. How could I bottle the experience and knowledge that she had into a product that I could consume on the go, on my phone, offline, anywhere in the world? How could I bottle what a local influencer could offer me as a curious traveler? And she said, you know what? That's a problem I've had. I just don't know how to solve it. I don't know how to build an app. I don't know how to create technology. But I think that would be something my followers would enjoy. And so I started out on a journey to build it. In that journey, I met many people in this room who became advisors to the company. I ended up becoming a part of CoBuild, which is part of the Collide Village program, and put a website up and immediately started to see something really interesting happen. I met Dawn a woman in Dallas who reached out blind, I've never known her, never met her, and said that she wanted to create content for a guider. I met Gaia in Sao Paulo, Stu in Nashville who writes walking tours of Paris, B in Ireland who wanted to write about Dublin, Sean and Yasmin, digital nomads that are from Austin but were currently in Kyoto when they reached out. And so what I realized and what was very humbling and very exciting was that instead of just finding a solution for one travel blogger, I had found a limitless market of influencers with a real problem worth solving. And that's a pretty exciting thing to find when you know and understand startups. So that was my what if. What if there was a billion dollar opportunity? What if peer-to-peer -peer influencers are the new gatekeepers to the world's largest industry? $1.4 trillion and controlled by large companies for no good reason. Our recommendations, 70% of them come peer to peer. We don't even look at traditional search when we decide what we want to do. Mobile phones are used four times a minute by millennials when they travel, 100 million travelers globally estimated. So what we did is we set out to build a solution for that and think of it as an Etsy for experiences. It's a combination of a private creation platform that allows the creation of on-demand experiences anywhere in the world by any person with influence and the ability to offer those in an app, a free app, by the way, which I ask all of you to consider downloading while we're here in the room. Look for Guider. Yes, please do. G-U-I-D-R-R -R in the App Store. It's free, so don't worry about that. And you'll see the experiences that already exist and create together a way to capitalize on that opportunity that I just told you about. So what is Guider? Simply, it's a way to create, share, and discover on-demand experiences built by the real people that you follow and trust. It's a B to B to C model, and what that means is we serve the influencer, the influencers use the app to reach out to the people that they already follow. And it's here, as I mentioned, it's in the App Store, download it, experiment with it. Within 24 hours of our launch, we were picked up. We were hunted by Product Hunt. So please check us out there. Pretty exciting. And I think that I'm nearly up on my time. But I also do uh, 
uh, invite those of us here who have passion for travel to consider being a creator on Guider. So thank you. Um, any questions? Yes. How do you acquire users and content? That's an excellent question. So the way that we acquire users is that we actually understand pretty closely the travel influencer market. Um, they, uh, people who have travel influence typically have a very visible presence on certain platforms. Instagram is a key one. 340 million of the 400 million impressions on Instagram are around travel. It's one of the biggest drivers of that particular platform. Twitter is another one. Bloggers are very active in terms of connecting and communicating with each other, so we've used them as one of our first customer markets. We've also found that because we're very succinct about describing who we are and what we do on our website, that we do get spontaneous outreach from people who consider themselves to be influencers. I'm a CMO by background, a longtime marketer with a brand marketing background. I'm amazed by how relevant the kind of people who arrive at our site are and how long they stay. The numbers are frankly really exciting to us. Um, in terms of how they go out and speak to their market, that's sort of the beauty of the Guider model is that we're allowing them to offer a product to a community that's already engaging with them. For example, if I'm an Instagrammer with 1.4 million followers, which by the way, there's many, you'd be surprised who have that. Just think about converting even a small percentage of those to buy a product from me that houses my knowledge. It's an enormous revenue opportunity. We believe that on an average price of $1.99, a person could actually generate, if they generated 15 to 1,600 downloads a month, they'd make $2,500 in residual income. It's a pretty huge proposition within the peer-to-peer -peer space, and we know and recognize that between the Ubers and the Airbnbs, and by the way, I have a background in this space, that we're really looking at an opportunity that's a sign of the times. We have a couple more minutes left, so I want to make sure I ask some other questions, but I'd be happy to follow up more. Yes? Thank you so much. No. I absolutely have. So what you're describing is really the core of what Guider is, which is as a champion of what we call new travel, which is this idea of people that are already operating in this space that recognize and treat others the way that a peer-to-peer -peer company would, a multi-sided market. I actually know some of the folks from Couchsurfing. I'm very involved in the international collaborative consumption space, and we absolutely have plans to reach out to partner organizations. We've been working really head down on our product and really trying to work in a small way rather than trying to rapidly scale straight away. We want to get to that point where we really have that product market fit in addition to the problem solution validation that we already have. And so that's why we've taken a more careful approach. We'd rather get it right and then take it to prime time than just kind of go there prematurely. Thank you so much. <laughs> There is not, and there's actually good reason for that, but we will. it's certainly something that we could look at in the future. When we did our initial research, we recognized that because the experiences inside Guider are priced by creators and they're earning the revenue, we don't see high traction for apps that have in-app purchase models within Android. Apple handles digital taxation at an international level in a phenomenal way within their price. It makes a creator compliant, so that's huge for us. Mm -hmm. Is it a transactional model that's using some revenue generation? Mm -hmm. It is, because let's say that I price an experience at two ninety nine. dollars By the way, the Cedars so need to have an experience. I love the coffee shop I bumped into my god before I got here. 50% um, of that would go directly to the creator every single time it was downloaded. 30% goes to Apple, and our fee is 20%, which is a fairly traditional fee for a multi-sided market within the sharing space. That's just one example. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, it seems to me that the real treasure trove that you have here is you've identified a demographic that has a large amount of disposable income, and they're moving in places that they're non local to, which means there's a hotel. They see the mm -hmm. entire price mm -hmm. and the acquisitions they've done. So, do you think long term your model is to go towards not charging on the initial for your user base and to work more on direct partnerships? Or 
I think it's a great question. We have a, like a chart that I didn't show today, but that we're working on, which is, shows like a mobile phone. I have literally a few seconds left. Transaction is a huge part of our future. We'll understand whether we need to leave a price point on the front end or not. We don't believe in freemiums. We think we need to teach this population to value their knowledge, not give it away for free. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Great job. Great job, great job, great job.